watching Amazing Fire TV. Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ. Hallelujah. Welcome to Faith and Grace Live. This is where we enjoy all that Christ has for us. And my prayer is that everyone under the sound of my voice will not miss your blessing. The blessing that comes from his word. I pray that the entrance of this world will give you life. And it will give you understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus I pray. Glory to God. Oh, it's nice to be here again. I'm excited because... God has given us the privilege to share his word. Today we want to continue with our series on, um, I know, I mean, grace for, I mean, good works. Uh, grace for good works. And uh, we are moving to the seventh part today, which says, I know your works, the corrupt work. We've been looking at the book of Revelation chapters um, 2 and 3, where Christ says, you know, write those letters to the seven churches, and each of the letters he says, I know your works. And because we are talking about good works, it shows that everything we do, whatever kind of work, God knows, God sees, and is the one that we evaluate it, you know, and is going to judge us based on what we have done in this body. Hallelujah. So today, we want to look at the church of Thyatira, the corrupt church, the church that has gone into a deep, you know, to deep corruption. Hallelujah. So we we'll look at it from verse 18 of chapter 2. Let's look at it from verse 18. And the Bible says unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, write, this thing says the Son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire. And his feet like fine brush. Wow. Verse 19 says, I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Verse 20 said, Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allowed that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess. To teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. Verse 20 and 21. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality and she did not. Verse 22. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed. Mm. And those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. Verse 23. He said, I will kill her. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and art. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. According to your works. Verse 24. Now to you I say, and to the rest of the territory, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other body. Verse 25. But all fast what you have till I come. Mm. Verse 26. And he who overcomes and keeps my works, and keeps my work until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Verse 27. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessel, as I also have received from my father. 28. And I will give her the morning star. And verse 29, the last verse. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And this time you, Christ ends this letter, he will end with this same statement. And you look at this. Let's take it from this verse 29. He was an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And you can see that this word is for now. This word is not in the past. This word is not even in the future. This word is current. This word is talking to everyone that has ear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So this word is for me, it's for you, 
is for the church of Jesus Christ today and it's for the church of Jesus Christ that will still come as it was in the, for the church in the past. This is what the Spirit is saying, talking about corruption that has, that has pervaded, that has, that has entered the church like mad. Sexual immorality. Hallelujah. You know, when we look at this church, you know, from the outside, you will agree with me that this church looks like a model church. And when you compare the church of Tartaria with the other six churches, there are seven churches, you know, Tartaria was the least significant city among the seven cities Jesus addressed. No matter how small the church was or the city was, you know, Jesus, you know, uh, I mean, nothing is hidden from Jesus. Jesus said to the church of Tyrotia, I know your works. Either a small church or a, small or a big church, I know your works. You know, and in many ways, the church, just as I said, a Tyrotia was a model church. Model in the sense that they had four great essential, you know, qualities. A church that has love. A church that has, you know, so much service. A church that has faith. And a church that is patient. It's a very good one. It looks so much of a model church. You know, when you look, look at that scripture again, very well in that verse 19. You know, there's a compliment there for that church. He said... The last are more than first. That is, not only did they have this work, but they have them in an increasing measure, ever increasing. They are growing in love. They are growing in, in, in their service. They are growing in their faith, and they are growing in patience. It's a growing church. It's a good church. a quality church. But something is in it. Something is amiss. Something is amiss there. So despite all their good works, Jesus saw in the church, and there, I mean, a significant problem, a serious problem. And what is that problem? You can see in that verse 20. Let's go back to verse 20 of that scripture. It said, nevertheless, nevertheless, God says, nevertheless. And what is the nevertheless in that verse 20? I have, I have found things, um, a few things against you because you allow that woman, Jezebel. If you have your Bible with me, I want you to underline because you have allowed that woman. I begin to wonder what have you allowed in your church? What have you allowed in our church? What have we allowed in our congregation that has become a little, a little living that leavens the whole law? Christ says, despite all your good works, Yet, I have this against you because you are loud. So, in other words, it's not everything that comes to the church that we should allow. You allow that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my, my, my servant to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idol. So, you can see, it's a serious thing. So, on the outside, they were a model church. Showing good love, I mean, good works, love, service, faith, and patience. Yet there was this corruption going inside of it. And the sin of the church was that they allowed that corruption. God have mercy. God have mercy. I wanted to look at how message translation put. I want to read verses 20 to 23, which is the core, I mean, where the problem is. And how Jesus addressed it. I will, I will read it, the, the message translation of verse 20 to 23 and that of passion translation. For us to have it, to grasp the understanding of it. Message says, but why do you let that Jezebel, who calls herself a prophet, mislead my dear servants into cross the dying, self-indulging religion? I gave her a chance to change her wish, but she has no intention of giving up a career in the God business. I'm about to lay her low. 
along with her partners as they play their sex and religion game. A lot of people are playing sex and religion game in the church today. I mean, there, there's so much perversion going on. There's so much immorality going on in the body of Christ. You hear of this pastor in sexual immorality. You have this scandal, that scandal, all in the church. So people look at the church today and they say, look, what are you talking about? They are not different from the world in society. But Christ says, I know your works. God sees everything. And God frowns at it. He said, the bastard offering of the idol warring I'll kill. Then every church will know that appearance, appearances don't impress me. I extray every motive and make sure you get <coughs> what's coming to you. I extray. God is not moved by the outward appearance of the church. God is not moved about the packaging we see from the outside. Oh, this is a mega church. Oh, that's a small church. Oh, this and that. No. We always just from the outside, well packaged, looking beauty from inside. But there's a depth of corruption that is going inside of it. God have mercy on us. Christ sees everything. You cannot hide it from He said, I extray. Christ will extray every motive and make sure you get what's coming into you. See how Passion Translation puts it. Because I want us... To, to, I want the message to sink from verse 20. Passion writes this way. Say, but I have this against you. You are forgiving that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is seducing my loving servants. She is teaching that it is permissible to indulge in sexual immorality and to eat food sacrificed to idol. There is so much tolerance in the body of Christ today. Many of us believe that we can be Christian and yet live, indulge in, in, in immorality. You live the way you lie. You live your life. Once I am saved, I am saved forever. No. God sees everything. The church of Jesus Christ is a holy ground. Verse 20, 21 of that passion, he said, I have waited for her to repent from her vile immorality. But she willingly refused to do so. Now I will lay her low with terrible distress, along with all our adulterous partners, as they do not repent. Verse 23 said, And I will strike down our followers with a deadly plague. Then all the congregation will realize that I am the one who thoroughly searches the most secret thoughts and the innermost being. I will give to each one what their works deserve. Hallelujah. So the center of this corruption is at the church. Uh, the church of Tartira is this. Is that was a, there's a woman whom Jesus called Jezebel in that place. You know, this may not have, I mean, uh, been a literal name. But a title that clearly represents a self-styled prophetess within uh, the church. You know, it's like. You know, when we call somebody <laughs> Prophet Balaam, it's not that Balaam, but the prophet that is operating in the spirit of Balaam. When we call somebody Judas, it's not that Judas that, uh, <laughs> that betrayed Jesus Christ, but he's carrying the spirit of Judas to betray, I mean, the church of God. Just like that. So Christ says, you allow that Jezebel. So when a woman is called a Jezebel, it's just referring to that spirit, that woman in the Old Testament who is known for immorality, for, for, for evil. She's an evil genius. If you want to read more about Jezebel, you can see the pattern and his work in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 21. No, 1 Corinthians chapter 16 to chapter 21. And 2 Kings, I mean 1 Kings rather, chapter 16 to chapter 21. And we look at 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 30 to 37. Let's quickly look at the end of that Jezebel we're talking about. Let's look at it because of time. Um, it says, now when Jehu had come to Jezreel, 
Jezebel out of it. And she put paint on her eyes and adorned her head and looked through a window. Verse 31, quickly. Then as Jehu entered at the gate, she said, Is it peace, Zimri, mother of your master? Verse, and he looked up at the window and saw, Who is on my side? Who? So two or three eunuchs looked out at him. Verse 33. Then he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down and some of her blood spattered uh, on the wall and on the horses. And he trampled her underfoot. My God. Verse 34. And when he had gone in, he ate and drank. Then he said, Go now, see to this accursed woman and bury her, for she was a king's daughter. Verse 35. So they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hand. That's the end of Jezebel. Verse 36. Therefore, they came back and told him, and he said, This is the word of the Lord, which is spoke by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, on the plot of the ground of Jezreel, dog shall eat the flesh of Jezebel. And verse 37. And the corpse of Jezebel shall be as refuse on the surface of the field in the plot of Jezreel, so that they shall not say, here lies Jezebel. So you can see the end of Jezebel. Jezebel happened to be the wife of King Heab, another evil genius that marries to another evil genius. Jezebel was an evil genius. I mean, you, you look at the story very well. She was the one that encouraged King Ahab to, to, to take over the, the, the plot of the land, the, the vineyard of Naboth. And you remember the story very well, how Naboth was killed. And the prophet of God, God sent the prophet to go and prophesy that, look, very one day Jezebel's blood will also be spattered on this ground and they will not be able to pick our remains and it happened as the Lord spoken and you can see when Jezebel appeared unto Jehu the Bible says I like the way message translation put that verse 31 30 it said when Jezebel had that Jehu had arrived in Jezreel she made herself up put on eye shadow and arrange her hair and pose seducibly at the seductively at the window when Jehu came through the city gate she called him so you can see Jezebel was an evil genius very seductive sexually immoral and the one that championed evil in that time and Jesus Christ the church in Tartaria has allowed such a spirit to operate in his church. And Christ says he has won, but they have not repented. May God have mercy. Hmm. So you can see that Jesus described the specific sin of this woman, Jezebel. Mainly she was an immoral and ungodly influence on others. As many, there are so many evil influences in the church today. And led others to this. Jezebel led others to immorality and idolatry. She corrupted the servants of Jesus. Jesus' greatest accusation was that this Jezebel did not repent. She apparently rejected the work of the Holy Spirit in her, in, in her heart, calling her to repent. I mean, to repent as she did not. Let's grab some lessons from this, from this corrupt church. From this corrupt work. Number one, we must not allow our good works to be corrupted with sexual immorality. We have all, all, all sorts of people, men of God, servants of God, great people in the church of God. Before you know it, they hate it. It's as if sexual immorality is not part of the holiness of God. God have mercy. Remember, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. We must not allow our good works to be corrupted by sexual immorality and things that is idolatry. Number two, sexual immorality is not allowed in the church of Jesus Christ. It's not. 
Why? Because the church of the Lord is a holy ground and any sort of sin is not allowed. Sexual immorality brings corruption to the church of God. And Christ frowns at, we must frown at whatever Christ frowns at. We must not allow it. And we must not stop doing what is good. We must not become distracted or discouraged from what Jesus wants us to be and to do. You can see, let's look at that verse 25 of that book of Revelation chapter 2. Mm. The Bible says in verse 25, it said, but hold fast what you have till I come. Hold fast. We must hold fast. That is, if you have not corrupted yourself with all this evil thing, Keep doing the work God has committed into your heart. Hold fast. That is, keep doing the work. Keep doing the work God has committed into our hand. This is very, very important. Do not allow yourself to be corrupted. May God have mercy. Hmm. Verse 26, he puts it that way. Verse 26 of that scripture. And he who overcomes. And who is the person that overcomes in that verse 26? And keeps my works until the end. Keep doing the work. Keep doing the God's work. Keep doing the right thing. Until the end. To him I will give power over the nation. In other words. If we can keep ourselves pure. And not to be corrupted by this evil thing. That has, that has, that has entered the church. And corrupted the church. Like a living living. That leaveners the old lungs. If we keep doing this God work that he has committed into our hand, no minding all sort of destruction we are seeing, God say we are going to reign with Christ. And that's the good news uh, to encourage every one of us who had been created for good works and is, and is doing the good works without being distracted. And he who overcomes, the one that overcomes is the one that keeps doing the work to the end. Many of us, we see ourselves, we claim to be overcomers. But we are easily overcome by all these sexual immoralities. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, every child of God, every man of God, every minister of the gospel, that the grace to keep doing the good works, receive in the mighty name of Jesus. The grace to be truly overcomers to the end, receive in the mighty name of Jesus. May God keep us to the end. So that we can reign with Christ. He said, I will give you power over the nations. Christ says, during the millennials, you will be partaker of those who will reign with me. I will be partaker of those who will reign with Christ. That is our hope. That is our joy. We have to keep doing the good works. Keep doing the work. That is the, that, that's the thing. Now, another lesson is we must not become overly discouraged at immorality and idolatry around us. Something you cannot stop. You, you dare not get it distracted about it. There are some things you cannot stop around you. Don't get discouraged. Do not say, okay, I mean, there's so much immorality around, so I want to keep away. I don't want to go to church again. You got to go to church. You are the light in the midst of darkness. Light shines better in the midst of darkness. The darker, the brighter the light. The darker the darkness, the brighter the light. And I want you to be that light that shines in the midst of darkness. I would like to be the light that shines in the midst of darkness. Hallelujah. May God help us. See, there is a special promise to those who overcome the threats of immorality and idolatry. What is that? Jesus offered a share in his own kingdom. I've just said that, as we have seen in that verse 26. You know, Jesus offers... Overcomers a reward greater than the kingdom. Hmm. He offered us the reward of himself because he is the money star. He said I will give him the money star. You can see that. Christ is the money star. He said who overcomes, I will give the money star. That is, I will give that person myself. I, 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 I can't wait, Lord. Help me. I don't want to miss the money star. May God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. And this letter applies to every one of us. It applies to everyone. It applies in verse 20. He said, you ask and hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. It applies to those who are like Jezebel. 
God is talking to you. You have this, you are operating in the spirit of Jezebel. Your own is to go into churches, you know, half naked, going up and down and parading and, and, and said, we are in seductive dresses, destroying the church of God. God is warning you. If you do not repent, God said, I will strike you with sickness. I'll put you on the bed, on the sick bed. I prayed for a repentant heart for you. Because God does not rejoice in the death of any sinner. But God wants uh, you, spirit of Jezebel, to, to, to repent. So it applies to those who are like Jezebel. Who leads others into sin. It applies to those who follow the teaching of a Jezebel and follow others into sin. It applies to those who permit a Jezebel to walk a wickedness. You pastors, you ministers of God that allows God is warning you, this message applies to you. This message applies to you that you follow the spirit of Jezebel, that you, have, you feel enticed, you easily get sed seduced by the spirit of immorality. And finally, it applies to who? The faithful who must hold fast. It applies to us. There's a great promise for you. There's a great promise for me. And if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, this word may not have any meaning. It may not have any impact. Until you give your life to Jesus Christ, you, your good works means nothing. I pray that you'll be able to pray this prayer of faith with me. This prayer of salvation with me. So that you can give your life to Christ and your good works will come because we'll be judged by our good works. We'll be rewarded by the works we do in this body, whether good or bad. Pray this prayer of salvation with me. Lord, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I am a sinner, but you died for me, Lord. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Take control of my life. From this day forward. Thank you Jesus for saving me. Hallelujah. I congratulate you if you have said that short prayer of, of salvation. Make sure you join yourself to a Bible believing church. And if you are in the city of Easton. I want to invite you to join us this coming Sunday. At by 9 a.m. The address is on the screen. And I want to assure you that you begin to receive more word. And be discipled. You begin to grow in the Lord and your good works will begin to count. Because you cannot be a, a Christian alone. There is no one man Christian. A lot of people have become one man or I mean online Christian. Oh, make sure you join yourself to a Bible belief. Stop despising the gathering together of believers. Some people say I'm online. I'm an online Christian. There are no online Christians. Unless you want your own online blessing. Obey the word of God. Join yourself to a Bible-believing church. I want to see you in this coming Sunday at Faith and Grace Church. Or join yourself to a Bible-believing church. As you take that step, may God bless you. See you this same station next week. God bless you. Hallelujah. You are now watching Amazing Fire TV. Impacting the world for Christ.